Look, Forrester, McGee may buy your story, but I don't. Why do you really want to join the Vanguard? Captain Kirk convinced me. He discovered the Klingons were behind the attacks on Bicea. But the Federation Council threatened to strip him of command if he went public. And the mysterious alien ship? Stark and I fabricated some evidence. You helped capture Faith Gage. That was personal. She nearly killed one of my crew. I'm picking up a memory from eight years ago. A Lieutenant Alan Forrester, his uncle, was killed by a Klingon bird of prey. The colony was later awarded to the Klingons, just like Visea. His belief in our cause is quite strong. He certainly hides it well. I'm better at playing Starfleet's game than you are. Where do we go from here? We. <laughs> we do nothing. Devolution Day begins in less than one hour. Devolution Day? McGeeah. It will be the end of the Federation as we know it. How? Oh, you'll know when it's time. But when it's over, we'll be able to place Kirk in power as the ideal leader of the new Federation. Why wait? Kirk believes in your cause so much he might join. Are you serious? You know him that well? How long would you need? I can have Kirk here in a few hours. You have one hour. That's the deadline. You better be able to deliver, Forrester. Oh, I will. Stop the countdown. Why? We don't want to incinerate Kirk on his way over, do we? Go ahead. Use this to give Kirk your message. Magia. It's been nearly an hour. Where's Kirk? Don't worry, he'll come. We've given him enough time. I told you, he'll be here. I'm not waiting any longer. Give me that. I'm restarting the countdown. I hear there's a group willing to take on the Klingons. Well, it's an honor, sir. Get to the point. What's your plan? We've set bombs in the offices of key Federation officials. Once they're gone, we're ready to step in to restore order immediately. Sir, you will be presiding over the new Federation. You better have planted those bombs well. Federation security is no joke. Let's see your layout. Incendiary bombs planted in public areas near Starfleet security. Planetary defenses in the Federation Council. Detonation in less than one hour. Very thorough, Mr. Malat. Thank you, Captain. You want to know what we're fighting for? A future. The galaxy is filled murdering Klingons. No one has the courage to stop them. More unaligned worlds brutalized by Klingon forces. I say, enough! You are the new blood that will stand up to interstellar barbarians. Ever since the Organian Peace Treaty, the Federation has been a wolf with no fangs. Hostile aliens nip like dogs at our heels. And what do we do? Nothing. Every day of peace brings us closer to the end of the Federation. Forrester's betraying us. Traitor, he's trying to blow out the timers. But here! Give me the phaser now. Put it down slowly. Slowly. Back up against the wall. Alien dies first. <laughs> Stop. Oh, please, don't tell me you're a traitor, too. Forrester lied to you, but he betrayed me first. If you want me to be your new leader, his punishment is my call, not yours. Yes. Yes, Captain. Aye, sir. This isn't set to kill. It isn't? No. It's set on wide-angle stun. Uh. 
to security. Need a security detail beam to this location. Nice work in disarming those bombs. you, but I could use a drink. Have you ever tried sawing a It's amazing, but with all that's been happening, I still have to prepare to graduate from Starfleet Academy. Stark and I had better finish our simulations quickly. This is not good. Even the Universal Translator is stumped. Interesting. The McClanty Matrix only seems to respond if we mimic its cybernetic patterns. It's as if the McClanty are sentient but have no real language. It could be an autonomic function, but not real sentience. They could be like cosmic parrots, like mimics. Parrots do not build spaceships. We must keep trying. Cadet's log. Well, looks like I'm still in the academy. There were times I thought I'd blown it, but now I think I've made the right choices after all. Speaking of choices, I spent a lot more time on the simulation than on my class studies. I might not graduate first in my class, but I just felt that Stirk and I were too close to an answer to give up. All known sentient creatures are neurologically wired to use language. But the McClanty appear to have no language in any conventional sense. But we get a clear response when we mimic its actions. True, but irrelevant. But you said there were old pathways and new pathways. Why would that be unless it were changing? Or maybe, well, let's try this. Passing it. Oh my god. We did it! We did it, Strick! Enter. Now, gentlemen, please explain your findings. Earlier, we concluded that the McClanty are not conventionally sentient and cannot comprehend a spoken language. However, we have now determined that they can learn we can't make the McClanty follow human thinking, so we have to try to follow their thinking. By mimicking the McClanty ship's every move, a Federation ship can establish a rapport. <laughs> Intriguing ideas, but I find it impossible to think that any crew would attempt to try such a radical theory. So don't feel too badly if it's never actually tested in the field. Uh, still, uh, you do deserve some sort of commendation for such a unique the graduation thesis. Uh, dismissed cadets. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And with that, the door closed on a year's work. Time for the final mission before graduation. This is Trek Zone Plays. And you can get exclusive behind the scenes info and first play access to all Trek Zone podcasts by becoming a member today. Click join on every Trek Zone video on YouTube. Go to the trek.zone slash support or scan the QR code on screen throughout the show. Good morning, cadets. We have a crisis on our hands. A small Klingon fleet has crossed the Federation border, composed of at least one heavy cruiser and three birds of prey. They have openly defied our treaty by destroying three Federation freighters, the last near New Danube IV. There are two Federation colonies in that sector as well, Omega Altair and Proxima. The Klingons deny any fleet action and are dismissing the reports as propaganda. Starfleet security thinks it may be a precursor to a larger invasion. The USS Alexandria and the USS Rutherford, two Miranda-class vessels, will rendezvous with you at New Danube IV to conduct both patrol and intelligence missions. You will be in command of this task force. Use it wisely. Captain's Log, Stardate 4990.5. 
A Klingon fleet has crossed the neutral zone and has attacked Federation shipping. Starfleet has ordered the Paris to lead a task force to repel this incursion into Federation space. Course laid in, Captain. from the USS Rutherford and the USS Alexandria. On screen. This is Captain Brentwood of the USS Alexandria. We're at your disposal, Captain. This is Captain Zora of the USS Rutherford. We await your command. Captain, I'm receiving a distress signal from the Telluride freighter Kasdan in the Chancellor system. They're being attacked by a Klingon bird of prey. Course laid in, Captain. No life signs, Captain. The shields were breached only twice. The freighter was destroyed by an engine breach caused when a photon torpedo shattered the right warp nacelle. The shield breach is significant, Captain. The two hull breaches are only two meters apart. The second shot probably went through three decks and exposed the engine core for the photon torpedo shot. Captain, Klingon gunners aren't usually that precise. I have found the freighter's computer records container. We should tractor it and decode it. This is Captain Brentwood of the USS Alexandria. We're at your disposal, Captain. Alexandria, proceed to the Chancellor system. Aye, sir. Captain, the USS Alexandria has warped to the Chancellor system. They should arrive in a few minutes. Captain, the Omega Altair 4 colony reports that it's under attack. This is Captain Zora of the USS Rutherford. We await your command. Proceed to Omega Altair, Rutherford. The course is being laid now. Your instructions shall be obeyed. Rutherford out. Captain, the USS Rutherford has warped to the Omega Altair system. They should arrive in a few minutes. Captain, the Proximan 3 colony reports that it's under attack. We have the freighter's computer log, relaying data to Mr. Sturk's station. Interesting. As unlikely as it seems, the Klingon ships that attacked the freighter had no life forms aboard. In addition, only a heavy cruiser and a single bird of prey participated in the attack. There are two birds of prey unaccounted for. Entering the Chancellor system. The bird of prey has turned away from attacking the freighter and is now heading towards us on an intercept course. They refuse to answer our hails, Captain. Captain, I'd rather not draw attention to us during your battle. Lower shields have been hit. We have lost the starboard shields have been hit. Starboard shields repaired. Towards us. I'm still picking up shortwave transmissions, but no one has access to subspace communications. There's a lot of panic on the planet, Captain.
Now entering Delta Lyra, Captain. This is where the transmission originates. I'm detecting a gravitic distortion in the signal. The signal is passing close to Delta Lyra 3. Klingon heavy cruiser decloaking. Upper shields have been hit. Upper shields down to 50%. Lower shields are at critical, sir. Upper, upper shields are at critical, sir. Lower shields have been hit. That shield system is damaged. I'm reading no life. Multitronic computer system invented by the Federation scientist Dr. Richard Daystro. We've got it, Captain. The cruiser is dead in space. Captain, Starfleet reports that all of the ships in the Klingon fleet have just exploded. The threat to this sector is over. Mission objective complete. Course laid in, Captain. Port side shields repaired. Shields repaired. Hailing frequency open. Mission accomplished, Starfleet. You successfully saved all the colonies and even took on the M5 computer and won. Congratulations. You did extraordinarily well. It was a nearly flawless mission. I have nothing but praise, but I've never been particularly good with praise. <laughs>